Well, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the third ISAT 2 Hack Week offered virtually this year through the University of Washington's eScience Institute. My name is Anthony Art, and I'm a research scientist here at the University of Washington. And I'm also the lead coordinator of the Hack Week program at the eScience Institute. And together with my colleague, Jessica Scheich, we've been um, coordinating the organization of this event. Uh, Jessica has been the lead coordinator on the community side, the ISAT2 community. And it's just a great pleasure to have worked together with this amazing organizing team in putting this event together. And I want to start today by thanking this group of people who've come together and worked with us over the past couple of months to prepare for this event. Um, not only have they put an enormous amount of time and effort into preparing the tutorial content and the notebooks that you'll be experiencing throughout the week, but they've also taken part in the uh, workshops and educational activities that we've offered to this team as part of ways for all of us to develop our skills in pedagogy and teaching these kinds of activities in an online interactive environment. And so I really want to thank this team for um, taking on those extra hours of working together um, so that we can bring all of you um, the best content that we can for this week. If you get an opportunity to chat with these folks over the week, I really invite you to offer them a word of thanks for all the time that they've put into preparing and uh, being part of this event. I also want to thank all of you for taking time to come together today, taking a week of your time. We're aware that this is a big time commitment, but we really think that this is part of our effort to come together, set aside time to work collaboratively, work in small teams, and really advance our science and our ability to work with ISAT2 data. So I really wanna thank all of you for being here. And uh, one of the ways that we can get to know each other a little bit more in this virtual environment is by um, some networking activities. So a little bit later in this session, we're gonna be inviting you into some small breakout rooms um, if you feel ready to um, get into these small rooms and share a little bit with each other we invite you to do that. And um, as you may have seen on Slack in advance of the event, uh, we've invited each of you to complete a little slide that tells us a little bit more about yourself. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to put that together yet, that's fine. Um, if you have a moment now, this would be great time to maybe prepare a little bit of text and throw it into a slide on our shared slide deck. The way you can do that is um, you can connect to these, uh, the slide deck that I'm showing right now, and I put it in the Hack Week uh, 2022 channel, and all of the links, uh, including this one here, to the This Is Who We Are deck are linked from the slide deck that I've shared. I wanna thank the sponsors of the ISAT2 event. Um, all of the Hack Week program design uh, came out of some funding from the Sloan and Moore Foundation offered to the eScience Institute uh, in the early development of this work. Um, 2I2C is a uh, nonprofit organization that we are partnering with this year to deploy the shared computing environment that you'll be working on. And we also have some cloud credits from Amazon Web Services. And then I really want to thank the ISAT2 mission and the NASA Cryospheric Sciences Program for their generous support of these interactive workshops are really prioritizing this community building and development of shared libraries so that we can advance our science with ISAT2. I know we've all become probably experts at working in Zoom over the past couple of years, but just a little bit of bookkeeping and logistics uh, to get us started here. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to uh, go in and change, rename yourself in Zoom. This is one of the several ways that we're just trying to build a bit of that social fabric and connection that's a little bit more challenging in this virtual space and having your name um, with the whatever way you'd like to be identified helps us do that. Um, so you can do that by clicking on the participants button and going to your name, clicking more and then renaming. So you may want to include your pronouns, you may want to include your a geographic location, whatever you prefer. And I'll just uh, send out a quick reminder to our organizing team. If you can also put the admin after your name, this is a way that we can signal to other folks uh, who are participating that uh, you can reach out to that person as part of the organizing team. You'll notice that in Slack as well, we have the words admin after our names to indicate that we're part of the team that you can come to for help. 
uh, we have disabled Zoom chat because we uh, want to prioritize all of our communications over on Slack. Uh, we use that for direct messaging and communication throughout the event. And the main reason for that is that Zoom chat can get a little bit hard to follow. Everything on Slack persists. And what's great is that you can go back, maybe somebody asked a question that is something you're wondering about as well. You can go up the feed and see that and see what the answer was. And we can kind of work together that way. So there are a lot of ways that you can give and receive help throughout the Hack Week. We'll be using Slack for that, as I just said. And here's a link to the channel that we encourage you to use for getting help. For all the tutorials, we're going to put all the help feeds into a one uh, channel called 2022 Hack Week Help. And for that, uh, when you have a question, this will be you know, even live during the tutorial. Uh, we welcome any questions that are happening um, because we'll have helpers uh, standing by to answer questions that you may have for the content that's being presented. And what we find helps is if we can put the questions um, into a thread or the responses, I should say, into a thread. So here's a quick example of somebody asked a question, having trouble unzipping a file. This is the zoom in of the what the thread button looks like. If you're the first person responding, click on that thread, and then you can see we can keep a nice organized response to that particular question that can be added to over time. So not only asking uh, whoever may be part of the organizing team and the helpers to respond to a question, but if you're a participant and know uh, how to help this person out, really encourage you to do that as well. And this is all part of our goal of you know creating this peer learning and connecting with one another to uh, share our knowledge so that would be um, something that we really welcome as well another channel we're going to use it's called tutorial prompts at the um, throughout the various stages of our tutorials the tutorial leads will be having a couple of questions throughout just to keep us engaged and connected and again we encourage you to use a thread for that so Here's an example actually from one of our uh, workshops prior to this event that we were doing. And we asked a, a prompt and then had some responses in a thread. And we'll have uh, reminders about the location of each of these conversations um, as we go through the tutorials through the week. Another way that we can build some connections and get to know each other is by updating our Zoom, I should say Slack um, profiles. And here you can go in and edit your profile if you haven't done so already, put your name, your pronouns, uh, whatever way you'd like to be identified. And a picture really helps too, that we can uh, put a, a face to a name and get a little bit more connected on Slack. A word about accessibility, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact one of the organizers if there's any way that we can make our content more accessible to you. All of the tutorials will be recorded and shared on our uh, institutional YouTube channel. We do that as quickly as we can. It takes a little time to get that process. Uh, we will also be enabling captions throughout the tutorials. If there's any other way that we can help you be, uh, uh, reach our content and be connected with our content, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. I said this at the start, but we will be recording the tutorials um, we have asked you to complete a media release form. I think Jane sent those out a couple of weeks ago um, on a, a Google form. Um, this is just sort of the legal requirements. We do use um, images and other content for our promotional Hack Week material. If you'd like to not be included in that, um, you can indicate that in the form and you can also turn off your video uh, during the tutorials would be another way to do that. I'm going to hand it over to Jessica to continue the introductory session here. Jessica, would you like to share the screen or would you like me to keep advancing? Uh, you can go ahead and keep advancing. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Jessica Scheich. Um, as Anthony said, I'm one of the co-leads. I'm the community co-lead organizer for um, this ISAT2 Hack Week. Um, and I, I'm currently um, hailing from uh, New Hampshire. Um, where I'm a research assistant professor at the University of New Hampshire, uh, as well as part of the um, University of Washington eScience Hack Week team. So uh, Anthony touched on this a little bit uh, already, but we just want to make sure that everyone everyone is is keeps in the back of their mind that that we understand that this is a very energy intensive way to interact. Um, 
and virtual um, and by being completely virtual, um, a lot of us are still in situations where we're working from home. Uh, video fatigue is real. You may have interruptions. Um, we, we understand we're all in similar situations and uh, we just want to make sure that everyone feels like they have permission to step away or not feel like they need to apologize when those, those interruptions and situations happen. And so now that all of the, uh, or a lot of the logistics is out of the way, we can get excited about Hack Weeks. What is a Hack Week and why, why are we all here? So Hack Weeks are interactive, participant-driven events where we aim to create a welcoming space for everybody to learn new things, build on their skills, practice working in small teams, and do some networking. So to do that, we have a couple of goals that we've outlined that we, we aim to keep in mind throughout the week as we're interacting with one another. Uh, we aim to foster a sense of belonging. We aim to gain experience in conducting data intensive research. research. We encourage immersive interactive learning. And again, this is where that, that participant driven really comes in. Uh, we're not the only ones with knowledge here and we want to learn from you as well. We want to incorporate elements of co-creation with participants. And we want to provide opportunities for people to build their networks. We know that this is especially challenging in this virtual environment. Uh, so we encourage you to encourage you to engage as much as you can with building those building those networks. And last but not least, we adhere to a shared code of conduct. Um, if you'll all recall, you all agreed to this code of conduct when you applied for this event. Um, and we encourage you to revisit it. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, um, please feel free to reach out to any of the organizers. If you experience something that you think is a violation of the code of conduct or just that makes you particularly uncomfortable, um, please, again, reach out to one of the organizers. We're, we're aiming to make this a very inclusive and supportive environment. There is also a, an anonymous reporting link that is on that code of conduct website. And if you don't want to don't want to reach out um, with your name attached, that's a really great way to give us feedback and let us know if there's an issue um, that needs to be addressed. And then, so those are some very general uh, Hack Week goals. And then for our event in particular, we have some very specific ISAT2 focused Hack Week goals. Um, as Anthony said, we're really appreciative of the ISAT2 mission for its support of open science and collaborative development of tools. And so we really want to use this week as an opportunity to foster contribution, contributions to some of those shared computational tools for working with ISAT2 data. We also would like to improve the accessibility of ISAT2 data. It can be very overwhelming and complicated the first time you encounter it. And so one of our goals is to make it easier for more people to feel comfortable using and working with this data. And then we also, again, to that networking, would like to develop ISAT2 interdisciplinary community collaborations. There's a lot of really incredible work being done with ISAT2 data. And it's very exciting to see uh, as we're all working on these things together. And so with that, I will say once again, welcome to the ISAT2 2022 Hack Week. And I will turn things, unless Anthony has anything to add, I will, I will turn things over to Charlie. Thanks, Jessica. Uh, I don't think I have anything else. So Charlie, take it away. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Charlie Haley, and um, I'm uh, the lead for community engagement. Um, 
I've been working with uh, Anthony with Hack Weeks for probably since 2016 and uh, eScience Institute, particularly since the quarantines on how do we how do we interact in a way virtually that is uh, um, a, a, a lot more engaging, right? That it taps into more of our ability to um, to share our knowledge and experience with each other in really generative ways. Um, I'm really excited about, we finally, we've been working a long time here to bring this hack, create this hack week for you. And it's exciting to be here to finally get to start meeting you. And I don't know about you, but whenever I enter uh, a room or a group and I don't know anyone, it kind of raises my anxiety. I get a little bit anxious about it. And so we've tried to come up with ways to make this as gentle uh, of meeting each other for the first time as possible. And that's one of the reasons we put together this slide deck, right? Because at least then you got to have a little bit of time to think about how you may wanna introduce yourself. You got to see who, um, who else may be in the room with you. We've um, heard from participants in past Hack Weeks that they actually access this slide deck quite a bit during the Hack Week, especially when all of our communications are moved to Slack and when people are talking about projects and various things, it's nice to be able to kind of put a name and a face and a location to who's saying that in Slack. And so in a minute, um, you're going to have an opportunity to meet um, three or four other people. We're doing this in a really small way. Three or four other people in this hack week. Jane will put you into random breakout rooms. This is where we're going to be accessing the, the slide deck, the introduction slide deck. Um, with the, oh, can we, um, Anthony, can you pop up the next slide, please? It may be good to reference this as I'm talking. Yeah, so, um, like for instance, um, when I was looking over the slide deck, I immediately looked at and saw that um, that these two people, um, Isolda and Veronica, they probably need to meet each other because Veronica loves band life. You know, how fun is that, right? And Isolda, she's um, wanting to get into or uh, explore van life a little bit. So um, those two should probably, I'm imagining if they bumped into each other, they'd have a lot to talk about, right? So that's just a fun little fact. I hope I didn't embarrass you too, too much by putting your slides up here, but I thought it was fun. Um, okay, so in a minute, you're going to be in breakout rooms with three to four people. Um, it's an you pull up your slide. You can either share your screen or you can say, hey, I'm on slide five and other people can follow along. Um, you it's an opportunity. You'll have about three or four minutes each to talk, uh, introduce yourselves to each other. And, and you can pull material from the slide, right? You don't have to say it all. You can dive in on different parts of this, like what you how you love giving help. Um, why you're here at this hack week. You could tell us a fun little story about some of the pictures that you posted. Whatever, it's your choice. Um, so you'll have maybe up to four minutes and uh, to meet each other. You don't have to take the whole time, but please don't go over that because you want to be really aware that while you have 20 minutes in the breakout room, you have to share that time with each other. If you have time left over, it might be fun to just start talking to asking each other questions, be curious about some of the information or something that they've shared. Um, I think I have covered everything, Jessica and Anthony. Uh, Naomi. Uh, could we get the link to the slide deck pasted into Slack just one more time? Absolutely. Yeah, Naomi, I just did that actually. It's in the 2022 Hack Week channel. Oh, excellent. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, I guess the other thing is if you are don't have a slide, haven't had a chance to do it, 
no worries, not a big deal. You can just speak to some of the things that are that we've been asking about in the slide deck. And if you're not quite ready to go to a breakout room yet, um, just um, don't accept the invitation that Jane gives you to go to a, a Zoom room. And with that, Jane, I think we're ready. back. Um, let's see, um, Anthony, can you share the slides again? Yes. Here we go. In the next one, where one of my favorite shows, I've got to, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't help it. I love Star Trek. Um, so um, what I want to, what this is saying to me is, is um, I just wanted to give a plug for um, the kind of environment and learning space that we're uh, endeavoring to create here at this Hack Week. Um, last year, I ended up being invited to give a workshop with a, for a group of data scientists in Australia. And I noticed that in the chat during the workshop, they weren't just posting questions to me, they were also validating and punctuating and kind of making jokes and fun of in a really playful way of some of the things that I was sharing. And then others would hop on and add their part too. And I noticed that what happened was it really created, it lightened things up. It's put a lot more spaciousness in the information that we were sharing because we were having fun playing around with it, right? And it was it kind of helped to break the tension of learning new material and of delivering new material. And so um, I want to give, a, I think this idea originally came in, Naomi um, is going to talk about that a little bit more tomorrow. But basically, it's like, um, we're all here, many of us, it's maybe the first time that you're at a Hack Week. It's a completely new experience. We've heard from past Hack Week participants that by the end of day one, by the time you've heard some tutorials and you're being asked to be in project rooms and you're meeting new people, it's, it's a lot to take in. And so, um, so we're trying to lighten up that environment. Many of the tutorials that are being offered this week um, they're certainly, um, it may be the first time they're presenting a tutorial at a hack week, but certainly the first time they're presenting that particular tutorial. And so um, it's for, for both sides, right? For both sides, the people that are presenting and the people that are participating, taking in the information, it can start to become a little tense. And so I invite you in the Slack channel, either the Hack Week Slack channel or the, um, the Hack Week 2022 Hack Week Slack channel when people are presenting to not just put in, I mean, questions are great because it's horrible to talk to a room full of crickets. So questions are great and punctuations and high fives are, are, are really awesome. And it helps to create a great environment for us to learn in. Um, next, I think before I hand it off to Tom, I want to talk a little bit about how we've designed the coffee breaks um, every morning and why, why we've done it this way. Um, we, Jessica talked earlier about Zoom fatigue, and, and it, we all know it is very real. I know when I spent all day on a computer, I feel like a walking head. I feel when I leave, I feel like my, I'm disconnected really to my body and my surroundings because I'm so immersed in what I've been doing. 
And it's really, um, if I'm just connected from myself, it's going to be hard for me to connect to other people when it's time to collaborate, or even it kind of dampens the, my ability to take in and integrate new information. So, um, and a lot of times, even if we're given a break, we're not, um, we're checking our email or we're putting the laundry in the dryer, right? It's not, we're not really uh, coming back to ourselves and, um, and relaxing at all. So we designed, it's an experiment that we're doing the first time in a hack week. We invite you to uh, try out this experiment with us. Of course, it will be, it's by invitation. And if you don't want to, that's fine too. But at the beginning of every break, for five minutes, we've got a practitioner, um, someone that teaches Qigong, and she will lead us through a five-minute movement activity to, to help pull some of the energy that's in our head and distribute it through our body and help us connect back to ourselves. One thing that makes that will make this a little bit easier is that when we do this, we will cut off the everyone's video and your mic so no one will see what you're doing. So I'll Heather will come in. I will briefly introduce her and then Jane will cut everyone's cameras and mics off and uh, just stand in front of your computer and go through the movements with Heather. Um, and then after five minutes, you've got a 10 minute break. And of course, if you don't want to do it, that is fine also. But I would encourage you to try it out at least a couple of times to see if it makes a difference or not. And with that, I think I am ready to hand it over. Does anyone have any questions about any of any of that? Okay. Um, okay, here we've got something. Oh, okay. I think we're going to do that. Um, so when you're like for tutorials and things, people are going to be posting their questions in the Hack Week Help. So if you want to do these punctuations uh, or running commentary, as you say, I would do that in 2022 Hack Week or 2022 Hack Week Help, where everyone will be monitoring those channels. <clears throat> 